Hello and welcome back to Let's Play the Blackwell Dis Almost said Deception. Uh, no, that's the previous game. Welcome back to the Blackwell Epiphany. I'm Wise Mamir. Last episode we helped a child move on. And yeah. The game, the game gets depressing at times. That's one of the times. Uh, yeah. Kendra will be back in later games. Just not this one. And presumably not this franchise. I think this franchise might be done. Who knows? I hope it's not. I really do. Because I... I love these games, and I'd love to see more games in this series, but I will settle for games in this universe. Uh, I went to the wrong place. Whoopsie. Whoopsie do. Okay. Here, Leah Piero, and back into the, uh, back into the house, back into the basement, which smells like the corpse, because of course it does. Time to talk to the shelf. Leah, and... are you there? Alert her. Oh, it's you, Bestower. Kendra is safe. Kendra is safe, Leah. You mean she's... She's moved on. She said goodbye to her father, and she said... She said she'll miss you. How could something that was so right go so horribly wrong? Right. I went to a few meetings, and then I knew I had to join the police academy. It was like a lightning bolt. What kind of meeting? We were all so lost, so hungry for direction and not knowing where to go. All of us searching for that elusive something. That revelation that would fix our lives. The meetings at Grace somehow gave them to us. This gave them familiar. to you? Yes. No matter how confused we were, we all found our way. But this, all this was the price. Leah, I need you to focus and tell me what happened. I loved being a cop. I loved being a mother. I did good, didn't I? I thought I did. And you, you do good. That's what I heard. You always help, right? I help the dead. That's what I'm counting on. Oh, what? Yeah. No! Jesus! So she... Did... Did it work? Why, Leah? She Why do this? I'm love. sorry, but it's the only way. My only escape is through you. I know what you did for Kendra. Now do the same for me. Please. Please, before they come for me. Oh, no. Okay, we're gonna have to use the tie. Okay, yeah, Leah, here's how it works. Aware, that's Officer Piero but... to you, and I know how it works. Great, that saves time. Red here is gonna take you somewhere safe, and when she does, you're gonna have a chat, okay? Fine, fine. Let's just do this quick. You hear me? Don't let this one just fly off into the light. Don't worry. All right, then. so quiet here. That little room was quiet, but not like this. It's like I'm hearing everything and nothing at the same time. Can you hear it? No, but Kendra said something similar. I is she out there somewhere? Yes, but Leah, before you go, Lord, I need you to tell me how you got this way. What led you to this? We called it the Grace Group because we met at Grace Church. We met once a week. We would talk. It was nice. So it was kind of a self-help group? Kind of. Kind of? What did you talk about? Funny, I don't remember. All I know is that it worked for all of us. It was like magic. We all learned what we were meant to be. I joined the police academy and never looked back. George discovered a love of art, made a killing as a dealer. George, he won't be out there, will he? He's gone. He risked himself and then he... 
Oh, oh no. What was that? Oh no, Leah, get through the light, quick. I I can't move. How do they find me? Here of all places. This is I don't really know. Just bad. try and hold on. You were supposed to help us. I'm trying, please. I just need time. Ah! No. Yeah, shoot. Not again. Not again. Hey, you okay? No. No, I'm not okay. We were too late. Too late? She was taken, just like George was. Oh, God. All she went through, she did it for nothing. I refuse to believe that. I just can't. Did she say anything, anything at all that could help us? There wasn't time. And there was something else. She mentioned something the else. Like, How did you get in here? What the? Leah? Oh, no. Um, look, I can explain. Turn around. Hands behind your head. No, wait, listen, I don't have time for this. A cop I is dead. Said, They're not going to listen. Turn around. Hands behind your head. On the floor. Please, just... Now! Right. And now another flashback. Sorry for the wait, ladies. My assistant seems to be out. What can I do for you? Are you the owner of this establishment? My name's on the sign. Ah, so you are Malone. That's me. And you are? My name is Madeline. And your friend? <clears throat> Jocelyn Contis. Pleasure to meet you both. Right. Like most lost spirits, he seems unaware of his circumstances. Okay. So, oh, I love how for Madeline, he just shows up as uh, Malone. For Jocelyn, he, Joey is dead guy. <laughs> That's funny to me. Huh, some kind of band. Danny and Linda Marconi? Never heard of them. Okay. They're all from last season. Ugh, the stupid rain. I look horrible. A jacket from two seasons ago. I guess this place has been closed for a while. Right. It worked, didn't it? I have no idea how that got there, and nobody can prove otherwise. Of course they can. Jeez, what happened here? I mean, I guess a shootout. But... Hey. Miss Contis, what can I help you with? The bullet hole. So, who shot up this place? Hey. Come on, this place looks like the set of a gangster flick. I don't know what you mean. The window. Uh, so, did you see who smashed up your window? What are you talking about? The window looks fine to me. Right, of course it does. Totally agree with you. You into music? You into music? I saw that poster on the wall. Oh, that's Danny's thing. Danny. The guy who runs this place with me, him and his girl, Linda. They're in a band. If you can call it that. They play weekends sometimes. He wants to make it big, but, uh... But what? But nothing. Danny just needs to focus on earning an honest living, that's all. Where do they play? Do Danny and Linda have regular gigs? I don't know. Why? I might want to hear him play. Save your eardrums, lady. That's my advice. Are you seriously telling me that this place looks normal? Listen, everything here is top of the line. We're even looking into that dry cleaning stuff. What cleaning? Dry cleaning. It's... Look, never mind. Can I help you with anything or what? Well, well see you around. Sure. Right. It's 1930, so... Some clothing items. We're gonna have a quick look around, see if... Hmm, so garish. Let's see if we can find anything. It has been a long time since I have seen my reflection. It appears to be a couple. I will need to have a word with my hope. I suppose in lieu of... Malone. Hi there, what can I do you for? Assistant. 
You mentioned an assistant. Where is he? Danny? I have no idea where he is. So we're a bit short-staffed, but nothing I can't handle. We'll handle I mean, that costume like of yours with it. extra care. Costume? That gown of yours looks very authentic. I don't even think you can get that fabric these days. <sighs> have I become antiquated so soon? No offense meant, I, I quite like it. The tiara's a nice touch. Brings out your eyes. Well, I always thought so. But you are mistaken. We are not leaving my costume here with you. We have other business. What happened here? What happened here? What do you mean? This shop. It is, shall we say, it looks shot up. Shot up? Look, I know the cleaning lady hasn't been in this week, but it ain't that bad. Now, can I help you or what? Right. You should take a closer look at the walls and windows. They are definitely not what they should be. You sure talk funny, lady. There isn't anything wrong with the windows that I can see. Okay, Danny is important to you. Your dad is definitely not going to work, but I'll click it anyway. Malone, I regret that it falls to me to tell you that you are dead. What? Get out of town. Now, can I help you or what? Madeline, does that ever work? <sighs> no, it does not. So true, it never works. So why do I do it? I could not help but overhear your conversation with my colleague. This, Danny Marconi. He is important to you, is he not? What makes you think that? Your energy. Your aura, if you will. It changes when you speak of him. So tell us, what is Danny to you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Malone, you know precisely what I am talking about. And you will tell us. I... <sighs> we will understand. You don't think we will understand? Rest assured, we will. The only thing I understand is that I want you both gone. I could leave as you request. But I don't believe you want me to. Not really. Well... Do you? I... Who the hell are you people? We are here to help. Nothing more. You are so close now. So close. Right. He... It, now he remembers. Why is everything so confusing? It does not have to be. Life used to be so simple. Then Danny had to go follow a pipe dream. He had to make deals with club promoters. Club promoters he couldn't pay. So they showed up here. I told Danny to stay away while I tried to talk some sense into them. And did you? He got away. That's what's important. At least, I think it is. I'm right. not so sure anymore. I understand you now. You're adrift. You are scared. But there is nothing to be scared of. Come here. There's club. My host? Uh. Yeah, sorry. He got involved with the mob, and because of that... I don't know why I did it. Danny isn't much, really, but he's a good guy. You think it was worth it? I don't know. Sorry. You don't have anything to say? Anything at all? No, not really. Yeah, she's right. a lot more So I just callous. head that way. Yeah. Well, tell your friend thanks. And if you ever see Danny... Forget it. I suppose it doesn't matter. Right. So Joey had gone into the light, and now he's a spirit guide. My host. My host, are you all right? I knew you'd follow me in here. You can never give me a minute's peace. You should not stay here too long. Or what? I'll die. I get it now. We all thought my uncle was nuts, but he was just them. He just stopped caring. About anything. Who could blame him? Trust me, my host. It is best to push those feelings aside. Why? It is what must be done. That is all. What does it matter? Listen to me. In time, you will feel differently. Differently? Yes. This will all feel... normal. Normal? I don't want this to be normal. Many of your predecessors felt the same. In time, things changed. I'm going dancing, Madeline. Don't wait up. 
Right, and this is... And this I is see. the end of Madeline's adventure. I suppose adventure after all this time it was inevitable that one of you deciphered the method. But do you think it will be that simple? It will not work. Do you hear me? It will destroy you. My host, Jocelyn Contes, hear me! Contes! Contes! And so she became the Countess. 2.23 a.m., Detective Corey Palmer conducting interview with Rosangela Blackwell. Detective Sam Durkin also present. So, Miss Blackwell, tell us again why you were in that house. Say nothing. Tell them nothing. Keep your teeth together. We'll get out of this. Answer the question, Blackwell. <sighs> Let the record show that the interviewee has chosen to remain silent. That's your right. But your silence can and will be used against you. Remember that. Right. Fine. Next question. What happened to Detective Piero? She shot herself. That's a lie. Why would she kill herself? She just wouldn't. Enough, Palma. You saw the paraffin test. Leah fired that weapon. I refuse to believe that, Sam. Believe what you want. Those are the facts. Well, here's some facts for you. This lady was chatting with Emil Haskins earlier this evening. Not only that, we have a witness who saw her sneaking into his office at work. How do you respond to that? I had the key code, I had permission. It's complicated. No answer, huh? Well, let me lay it out for you. We spoke to the clerk on duty. We spoke to Emil Haskins. A man who is now a widower, I might add. Nobody gave you permission. But then, breaking and entering isn't really a new thing for you, is it? I've pulled your file. Do you even know how many restraining orders you have against you? Let the record show that the interviewee has chosen to remain silent. Again. If getting banned from the campuses of NYU and Columbia weren't bad enough, We've got a dozen complaints registered against you from businesses and families. Right. I'd call Bellevue to have you taken away. But you're banned from there, too. Who the hell are you? And why haven't you been taken in before now? Palmer, take a walk. Sam? You're tired. Go get a cup of coffee. I don't need coffee. Don't think I don't know what's going on here. I've heard the rumors. That you've got some mysterious informant. Is this her? Palmer? Fine, I'm going. But we will find out what happened. It's our damn right. job, after all. So, you happy now? Of course not. I only wanted to... What, help? You think you helped anyone here? There's something much bigger going on. So you said. But we cops, we like things simple. Not you, though. You make things complicated just by walking into a room. What are you trying to say? Officially, we're pursuing every lead. Unofficially, there was no trace of the bullet that killed the little girl. With Leah dead, we'll most likely never solve it. The trail is too cold. Wait, the so, bullet? So, what do you need? Um, excuse me? You want it in so bad? You're in. You won't be on the books. We can't even pay you. This case is too high profile. So, what do you need? Okay, so... Access to Leah's case files, access to George Austin's apartment, and everything you know about him. Uh, we're gonna need all three of these things. Access to Leah's case files. Can't do it. Those are being boxed up and archived. Anything else? Okay. Access to George Austin's apartment. I'll take care of it. Anything else? Everything you know about George Austin. Everything you know about George Austin. Palmer can get you that. Speak to him tomorrow. Anything else? A cup of coffee. Cup of coffee? Cup I'll of have coffee. Palmer get you one on the way out. Anything oh, else? Nothing, nothing that I can think of. All right. From now on, you talk to Palmer. He'll be at the front desk tomorrow. Detective Durkin, Sam. Why are you doing this? Why me? 
My first case involved a kid. 30 years ago, it must have been. There was this little girl living with her aunt. The aunt went nuts, smashing oh. things, screaming. Total loony. The little girl was hiding in a closet. Couldn't have been more than five. Scared out of her mind. That I've had a soft spot familiar. for kids ever since. I see. Go home, Blackwell. Get some sleep. You look like you spent the night in jail. So, that's why. Huh. The press are having a field day. Lots of theories, but nothing approaching the truth. You expect anything different? Just be glad your name didn't get leaked. That's the last thing we need. No trace of the Grace Group, either. Then we best get out there and do what we do. Auntie Lauren gave that bear to me when I was a kid. His name is Griff, the P.I. bear. Although he's more the geriatric bear these days. Mm hmm Okay. So, new emails. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. That's just sickening. Okay. We've got case notes which we'll download. Okay, and uh, Officer Palmer is uh, reluctantly helping us. So, first stop. Back at the uh, station. Oh, it's you. Sam told me you'd be swinging by. Hi, Corey, was it? No, it's Officer Palmer. Durkin told me to speak to you. So Durkin told me to speak to you? Yes, I heard. Congratulations, I guess. I don't know why you're so special, but orders are orders. You need any information from us, I'll see about getting it to you. But you talk to me, and only me. Understand? Perfectly. I'm sorry about Leah. I'm sorry about Leah. Don't even go there. I don't care what you saw or what the evidence says. Leah wouldn't kill herself. And if she did, then she wasn't Leah anymore. Oh, wow. A cop that doesn't give a shit about evidence. Big surprise. So are we good? Good? You don't think I still killed anyone, do you? I don't know what to believe. But Durkin vouches for you, and he now owes me a favor, a big one. So, I guess I come out ahead. Where's Durkin? Is Detective Durkin around? I haven't seen him since yesterday. I'm sure he's wandering around somewhere. Yeah, probably. Okay, let's bring up the fact that he's taking Leah's death personally. You seem to be taking Leah's death rather personally. The chief would agree with you. That's why I'm shackled behind this desk and set out there doing something. Right, can't have you interfering because we know you'd interfere. So what's the latest on George Austin? He was killed with a 22 caliber bullet. That's all we know so far. We're still talking to Leah's ex-husband, but he's got a pretty solid alibi. Right. How did Kendra die? Was that ever established? I read the autopsy report. It was definitely a bullet. It went right through her shoulder. Clean hole all the way through. The coroner said that hmm. she bled to death, but could have survived if she was brought to a hospital right away. Right, but Leah... I don't understand this. Panicked and dragged Not at all. her into the space behind the shelf. So, in the end, it's Leah's fault that Kendra's dead. Did you know Emil Haskins at all? I don't know much. Just what Leah used to tell me. I got the impression he was a deadbeat. Always out of a job, always late with child support payments, things like that. Guess he doesn't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Right, all your information about PM is second hand. So what's the story with you and Leah? I get the impression you knew her pretty well. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I partnered with her back when I first joined the force. She taught me a lot. Everything, really. I owe her. She was a rock. She was a rising star. Why would she flip out like she did? I'm working on it, Corey. I really am. That's Officer Palmer. And I'm not holding my breath. Okay. 
Whoa. George and Leah both were members of a self-help group. They called it the Grace Group. Oh yeah, Leah told me about that place. She did? Yeah, she didn't go into detail, but I know it meant a lot to her. She used to tell me that nobody could ever fall so far that they couldn't still reach for a helping hand. I'm not sure what that meant, but she used to say it all the time. Hmm. Well, I'd better go. Sure. Right. So all of this is reminding me very much of the end of Life Well Deception, where we figured out that Gavin was heading a cult. Uh, I have a feeling that's what's going on back at the uh, back at Grace Church. Hi. Yes, Miss. My name is Rose Angela Blackwell. I was told you'd be expecting me. Is this about George? That's right. I still can't believe it. But here's the key. 12th floor, penthouse A. Thanks. 12th floor, penthouse A. Okay. Yep, just old clothes. Right, nothing interesting about the box of clothes. So I guess we're heading up the stairs. Or up the elevator. That'd look amazing on my bathroom wall. Darling, that thing's bigger than your entire bathroom. Okay. So, first Bok choy, list. garam masala, quinoa, branzino. It's either a shopping list or a voodoo spell. Okay, that's definitely a shopping list. It's a tablet computer. Looks like it's still in the charging dock. Okay, let's see if we can get in. One missed call. Michael. Whoever this Michael is, he seems to know quite a lot. Hmm. Okay, so we've got Michael's number. So this Michael has a source who knows about bestowers. About me. This is starting to get personal. Hmm. Whoever Michael is, he seems to know a lot. Perhaps more than he should. Good. A little table and a chair. I don't think I can do any. So we go in here. This is private property, you know. Hmm. Right. Oh. Hello, um. Mistress. Hi there. Yes. Um. Hi there. What are you doing up here? I'm a friend of George. Uh, friend of George. I'm a friend of George Austin. Hmm. A friend, of course. I suppose he was bound to get to a redhead sooner or later. Oh no! Oh. It's nothing like that. Please, That's it's none of my assumes. business. Okay. Anyway, I'd best head back in. But I'm sure I'll see you around. Ta. Okay, roof ghost. Okay. I have a feeling we're gonna need Joey to go over here. I think the door might definitely be lost. Whatever this note says, it's too dark to read it. Right, so blow it into the light. There we go. It says, I know about Heather, and it's signed by someone named Jay. Okay. Hi there. I'm sorry, have we met? Kind of. I think you met my friend earlier. I see. You're both looking after George's place. Yeah, something like that. Something along those lines. So you actually live here, uh, so to speak? Yes. Why are you so surprised? Well, this place is kind of, well, empty. I live alone. That's not what I mean. Look around. There's nothing in here. What on earth are you talking about? <sighs> Never mind. Uh, right. We can't really ask about the uh, furniture because, unfortunately, she died before the furniture was all removed. So, um, 
if she's going to in insist that the furniture she had is still there. Well, whoever you are, I'll say hi to George for me. Okay. So I'm going to make a save here. And... Next episode... We will pick up where we left off. If you liked this video, leave me a like, a comment, and a subscribe. It would really help me out. I've been Wise Mamir, and I will see you next time.